Welcome everybody. This is Cindy DeFilippo, Daniel Webster Council's Family Engagement Coordinator, and welcome to our membership workshop. This month's workshop is a new member coordinator, coordinator training, say that three times fast, and we will be going through step-by-step -step what a new member coordinator is and uh, why the role is important and how that role works within your units. And then we also have some uh, recruiting and retention ideas as well. What is a new member coordinator? So the new member coordinator role is a fun and engaging role. So this is not someone in your unit that maybe is referred to as more of a wallflower or a shy person. This person is gonna be an outgoing, fun uh, individual that really, really loves people and loves talking to people. This person works on forming relationships with new members and their families. And um, we wanna make sure that the families are a right, the right fit for your unit. And if they're not, that you're open to helping them find the unit and program that is right for them. And this person should be someone that your committee and that your COR talks about and recruits. You know, you want you want to meet as a committee when you're thinking about new leader positions. If you guys aren't already in these roles, of course, and meet as a committee and really talk about who would fit this role the best. This is a really important role, and maybe you have two or three people, which is even better. And then want to make sure that that person gets the appropriate training, both online and face to face. And this person sh should also be mentored by the district membership chair and become part of the district membership team. And um, our team can also guide you on who those district team members are and how to get in touch with them as well. This person can also use a team approach by encouraging more than one new member coordinator or NMC as you see here in a unit. So if they have other friends within the unit that they think would be a great team member to welcome new families, definitely gather those people and have everyone do training together and work together as a team. Um, and, you know, maybe one of maybe one of the new member coordinators is really great with Facebook and social media and that person can be in charge of scheduling events or on social media or posting some pictures or um, maybe another person is really loves to plan and is a huge planner and a plan and they're the ones that plan your monthly new friend activities um and other activities to invite new members in and then maybe the other person is great at flyers and really loves the creative side you want that person to be creating those flyers and visuals um, that get out to schools and your um, and places in your community that attract families and this person should be very visible in the unit on a weekly basis and easily identifiable at unit gatherings by their welcoming smiles and the BSA welcome logo, which you see up in the right hand corner of the screen there, that is downloadable as well. Um, they can display the logo maybe on a welcome table that you have set up and also wear it. Uh, maybe as a, you can make pins or maybe put it on a um, sticky name tag of some sort, you know, print them out as stickers and um, wear them on your, on your field uniform or um, your casual clothing. Or, or your class A uniform if you prefer. So why does every unit need a new member coordinator? And yes, we are suggesting every unit does have a new member coordinator. The reason being is that it really helps strengthen a unit and addresses the many membership challenges that we've had, especially since COVID. The new member coordinator makes everyone feel welcome and engaged encourages families to stay, really helps with the retention rate of our units. It fosters volunteerism with our adults. And as I said, it increases the recruitment and retention. And they really focus on welcoming families that weren't previously reached. Maybe we weren't target, targeting all the schools in the area, or maybe folks that were playing sports or doing other clubs that um, this person happened to be able to reach out to, or a team of people. As a new member coordinator, you need to know your audience. 
So we've talked about this, the dynamic recruitment workshop, which you can find on the Membership and Marketing Hub under the workshops tab. We have all our workshops recorded there and downloaded to there for you to view later. But you want to know your audience and your, uh, that you, we have what we call always joiners, maybe joiners, and then there's um, some response to barriers that really helps um, talk to families about why scouting is a great fit for them. So the always joiners is about 15% of the available families that are going to join. So that means these are the families that they get a flyer and those families are definitely going to come and show up at your meeting. These people probably already are familiar with the brand. They're familiar with Boy Scouts. Their family probably was involved in the past and they know what to expect and they can't wait to sign up. I call it FOMO. These families, these people have fear of missing out FOMO. Um, so they're likely to show up at your joint scouting nights um, or any night for that matter. And they're ready to join your group. The maybe joiners is about 70%, which is a pretty big percentage when you think about it. And these are the folks that really need some extra attention. So they need more information. They need the specifics. They have questions that need to be answered. And really, we need to figure out, one of our specialties as new member coordinators is to really figure out what their barriers are to join, what's holding them back. So there's this unique uh, technique that um, we learned during one of the national BSA workshops that I thought was so helpful. And you guys probably already do this, but it's something great to keep in mind for your other, you know, to teach your other leaders as well. It's the feel, felt, found technique. And it's a proven technique that really helps people, um, you know, change around the perspective of what the barriers may be. So um, let's say you're talking to a family at your membership table and they're saying, oh man, once a week, like we're already so busy. I don't want to add something else to our schedule. Your response would be, I understand. And I had the same feeling about fitting another thing into our busy schedule. So see, they add, you're, you're empathizing with them and saying that you understand, um, you know, what their, what their feelings and thoughts are about that. And then you proceed and say, I felt that I wouldn't have enough time to. So you're, you're agreeing and you see where they're coming from. And then, but I found that it was a perfect way for our family to actually gain more time together. So you see how that's feel, felt, and found. It's the three Fs. And it's a really easy technique to remember. And it really can be used for a lot. Um, you know, a lot of people, um, pricing can be the barrier right now, which is understandable. Everything's more and more expensive, uh, seems like by the day, by the week. So, you know, maybe that example is, you know, I understand when I first saw the price up front, it real, I was really feeling like I couldn't afford that. And I, I really felt I couldn't afford that. But then I found that it was cheaper as a year round program than most sports are. So that's another example of how to use the feel, felt, found technique. You can definitely practice it on friends or your family too. It's easier once you have some practice in there. So as a new member coordinator, you should know your unit inside and out. So you're the expert. You're the person that all these new families are going to turn to. So your new member coordinator, or if you are the new member coordinator, or your team of new member coordinators should really be the expert. You know, think about all the fun things our scouts do every year. And also, I, I also try to, um, when I talk to leaders, remind them how they felt when they first joined, right? Remember that feeling when you first walked into this room and maybe your pack or if you started at a troop level was a really big unit and you walked in and you felt lost and it seemed like everybody knew each other and you didn't really know where to go. As a new member coordinator, you want to be that person that directs somebody, they welcome them right in, and you direct them exactly where they need to be and make them feel comfortable. So one of the ways to do that is, you know, think about what made you want to join and the things that you do every week or every month or every year and use those examples of all the fun stuff and what your scout has learned to talk to those new families about your unit in that compelling way. You know, I often tell people, man, my son was so shy when we first started. He was in first grade and now he's a freshman in high school. And his teachers tell me that 
He is, you know, loyal. He's a loyal friend. He's helpful. He's kind. He's trustworthy. And those are all the ideals that we teach in scouting. And, you know, parents, especially guardians, adults, they want to hear those things. And that's what makes scouting so great, right? Is that we reinforce such a strong moral code. And that's what families are really looking for. And then you want to, you know, think about, you know, are your families hikers, campers? Are they into STEM? or, you know, or woodworking, or orienteering, you want to be able to communicate what your unit is all about to those new folks. So just about when you, just like when you're thinking back to, you know, what your unit does for fun and what got you interested, really think about those specific examples. If you guys are a huge outdoorsy unit and you camp all the time and you do complicated hikes, um, you know, you do some adventures, um, maybe that family is more into STEM and maybe you don't do a lot of STEM. So maybe we talk about partnering units that do more STEM activities to be sure that these families find the unit that's right for them. Um, so that leads us into assessing the fit. It helps recruit whole families, not just the youth. So you want to make sure, um, you know, this helps make sure that we maintain a healthy unit. So if that family is not a good fit for your unit, for whatever reason, we all have the responsibility to find the unit that that family will thrive in, like we talked about before. So maybe there's other packs, other troops uh, for older kids, you know, crews, exploring posts that would be more suitable for this family. Because after all, you know, it's about introducing more families into scouting, not necessarily into your units. We want them to join our individual units, of course, but we don't want them to walk away thinking that you're the only option either. The language of scouting, that can be intimidating, right? Along with the class A uniforms. So really know the language and um, through Scouting Wire um, and other um, you know, online avenues, they have some great um, blogs and articles and references with um, the scouting language. And you might wanna have a printout you know, something that lists out scout master, cum master, uh, den leader, or, you know, patrol leader, et cetera. All those, all the lingo that we just, that we just know, right? We take that for granted, but you might want to have a printout at your welcome table. Um, that way you're, they're instantly getting used to the whole scout lingo and it'll be a lot less intimidating. And as the new member coordinator, we do suggest that maybe you wear a class B shirt and hat, or maybe you wear regular street clothing, so that way they're not walking into a room of all tan shirts. And as a new member coordinator team, you want to know how to invite new families, right? That's the whole goal. So maybe you're at your next meeting, if you haven't done so already, ask everyone in your unit to generate a friends list. These could be friends in the neighborhood that aren't scouts yet. From their, from their child's classrooms or schools, after school clubs and sports, and create a list and challenge them to write down at least five families. And so think about your unit. And if each person wrote down five non-scouting families, the percentage of new scouts that you could possibly get out of those lists. And then once a month, if you haven't done so already, plan a fun activity. And this doesn't add extra work to your committee when, when you think about it. This is just taking one of your meeting days and turning it into something really fun. So it actually makes it a little bit easier on your leaders if you think about it. And you designate that once a month date as a um, new family activity day or a joint scouting day. And you don't have to wear uniforms, maybe class Bs are better or street clothing. And you can, um, you know, plan it on maybe it's if you meet every Monday or every second Monday, then maybe the second Monday of every month is your uh, fun activity day or your joint scouting day, or maybe it's a second Tuesday, or maybe it's the first Tuesday of every month, whatever you decide that's the easiest. And it gives adults really a chance to hang out and get to know each other as well. Um, because if you plan like a game night or a kickball game, the kids will be busy playing that with, of course, adult supervision, but you'll also have the chance to not be as engaged with those den meetings 
or any of those scouting activities that normally would take your attention away from some of the families. So, you know, these NFAs, as we call them, new friend activities, provides the opportunity to talk to those new families that might, might not necessarily come at a joint scouting night because the joint scouting night people, those are the people that are, are always joiners, as we talked about before. It's also um, less threatening to ask those families to come to a barbecue or come to a game night or a kickball game instead of saying, oh, why don't you come to a scout meeting? You know, for those that don't know much about scouting, number one, it may sound boring or uninteresting. And number two, they may, but that may feel a little threatening to them. So having those fun alternative nights is um, a lot less threatening and welcoming to those new folks. You want to know the details, right? How many times do you hear people say, well, how much does it cost? What do I need to get started? Do I need anything else? When's the next meeting? Have those details available with you right at your membership table. So on the Membership and Marketing Hub, we do have a membership fees chart that you can download or print or just call up on a device that you'll have at the table with you. And it has all the uh, fees separated so you can so folks know exactly what they're paying for and then it has um, them combined as well so you know what the total is for each month because our fees are prorated and that can be tricky so this is all there for you in black and white for you and the families and then if your unit charges you know fall and spring fees or any additional uh, event fees at all then you also want to know what those are and when they're due. So those families also know to, to expect that as well. A lot of families are surprised at some of, you know, what they feel are additional costs with scouting. So you definitely want to make them aware of um, exactly what it's going to cost them to join. And they often want to know, like, what do I need to get started? You know, where, like, how do I get the uniform and how do I know what to, you know, what patches, what badges to get on those uniforms? How do I get that? Um, so you might want to have a, a printout or a QR code handy uh, for them to find the scout shop online and maybe have a printout on all the things that they may need for the uniform. The scout shop also has a uniform checklist. And as you guys probably know, when you walk into the scout shop, they are, um, they are excellent. And you can literally tell your parents that they can go visit the scout shop and say, I'm a Cub Scout in pack 19 and um, I'm gonna be a bear. What do I need for, you know, in, in den one, what do I need? And they'll literally grab all the things with that family that they need. Um, and don't forget, in order to get started, you want them to register. And really, online registration is the easiest because the pricing is correct online, and they go right into my dot scouting and will appear in Scoutbook as well um, almost immediately. So that's the easiest way to get those folks registered. So if you don't want folks to use your personal mobile phone, um, you might want to have a a laptop of some sort or another device set up at your uh, membership table for folks to be able to go right online. Of course, if they have their own cell phones, they can easily go to beascout.org and find your unit pin that way. Or you can download the QR code to your unit pin. They can scan it with their cell phone and go right to your pin, select apply now and apply. If they're still not sure that they want to join right then and there, then they can go to your unit pin and select request more information. And that will pop up in my dot scouting um, for you as well. And you can follow up with them with an email and a phone call, um, you know, the next day or, late, or after the meeting. And a lot of folks wanna know, you know, how often do you meet? When's the next meeting? If you do plan out your calendar for the year, which we highly suggest that every unit has a plan, um, you know, they meet in June usually at a committee meeting and plan out the entire year of scouting. You can print out that calendar so they can get excited about all the cool things you guys have coming up. And then maybe you have little bring a, bring a buddy cards printed, which we can help you with that as well. And um, with a little, with the date and time for the next event or next meeting. So that way um, the prospective scouting family or Cub Scout or, or Boys, Scouts BSA Scout 
um, can hold on to that and be reminded to show up at the next meeting. And, you know, you do want to give them the lowdown about how often you meet and, you know, that you meet at, you know, First Baptist Church every week or wherever your location is and the time. And you definitely, if you're having a regular night when you're welcoming new families and you have, let's say, if you're a Cub Scout pack and you have dens all meeting at the same time, you definitely want to walk that family over to the den, introduce them. Maybe you have an extra friendly child in that den that's really good with new people and you pair that new scout up with that friendly scout. Um, and that way they can really experience the den while they're there as well. So we have just a few new friend activity ideas. And, um, and this can just be a fun night really. Anyway, if you're not expecting new people one month or one week, that's okay. Have these fun events planned out and execute them anyway, because your scouts and your scout families will really enjoy them as well. It brings everybody together and it really helps with retention. So things like an outlaw Pinewood Derby, um, a recycled rain gutta regatta, if you haven't done that before, um, maybe your unit or, or all the parents and adults can bring in juice boxes and um, bags of chips, individual bags of chips. And with those materials, after the kids are done eating, they can make a boat for the Rangata Regatta. And um, we actually have a few Rangata Regatta um, raceways, as you see in this picture here, that they're inflatable and you just need a few gallons of water to um, obviously float the boats. So if you needed to reserve that for the event, we have those materials for you as well. You can do a family camp out or a camp in at your chartered org. You can do a s'mores, scout spirit and skits night because the kids, the young kids especially love skits, love s'mores of course. And you could kind of um, share, you know, what it means to be a scout around the campfire. You could maybe create a club and maybe once a week you have a hiking club. You know, this would be great as, as the spring comes and things dry up a little bit the spring and summer. And instead of having it being a scouting joint, you know, a joint scouting night, you could say, hey, we're hosting a hiking club or a sports club or a board game club. Come join us. And that will get folks in without the intimidation of joining scouting. Um, this is great for the older kids. You can do scout skills stations. Maybe you do knot tying in one station, maybe some simple first aid skills at another station, um, you know, how to make a tourniquet those types of things. You could plan an adventure day at Granite Base Camp if you're somewhat local to Manchester. Um, orienteering, a STEM activity, kickball game, movie night, the list goes on. So while you're hosting these events, you definitely want to have a plan to co collect leads and follow up. And we talked about that briefly just a second ago with your bscout.org unit pin. We highly suggest you use the unit pin to capture leads because there's not a piece of paper to lose. You're not putting it on just your phone. It's going to be in the units pin for your key three to see. Um, you can download the Q pin QR code, which you can see down um, there's a sample flyer here. This image can be found on the BSA Brand Center and you can download the image and um, I put it in like a Word document and then I add the pin and the um, and uh, any other logos to it. I'm sure there's an easier way, but that's how I did this one. And you can put your unit pin there in the lower corner and you can frame this and put this on your membership table and that's where folks can scan it and um, add themselves into the invitation manager or apply instantly online. Um, basically it's like a sign in. So if you ask folks, hey, can you sign in? Um, then they're more likely to um, you know, um, scan the code and, and get their information in there for you. Do not let new people leave without leaving some type of contact information. Maybe you can set up a little raffle or a prize and ask folks to leave their contact information. And if they do, they get entered in to win a raffle. And maybe it's a class B shirt, an extra class B shirt that you have um, with, you know, uh, some 
leftover scouting patches or badges as well. Kids love that stuff or stickers or maybe a troop hat and a fleece or something like that. And, um, and that usually is a great incentive for folks to at least leave an email. And don't forget to follow up. Follow up is key. Some folks that we hear from, they'll say, well, I called them once, I didn't hear back. Or I emailed one time and they never came back. It really is constant follow up. And you might want to consider, you know, if you send out weekly uh, email updates to your unit, you might want to add those folks to those weekly updates. Or maybe you create separate weekly updates or monthly updates for potential families. So they're on an email list and they're constantly reminded that your unit is still meeting and they're seeing all the cool things you're doing. Maybe you add pictures from the Pinewood Derby or your blue and golds or uh, your Klondikes or a camp out or high adventure trip. And um, just remind those families that you're there and they're welcome to come back and check, check out the unit again at any time. Be creative, right? And have a team mentality. I think that's key because the whole committee works together as a team. And when other parents and adults see that you're working as a team too, it really want, everyone wants to get involved because it's fun. And that really includes involving your partnering troop and pack. I think we forget that we're all working on the same team and our troops and pack should really be working together when it comes to recruiting and retaining our scouts. So as you all know, strength is in numbers and sometimes it's hard to find all those volunteers. You know, people don't generally come forward all the time. So invite your partnering troop to plan a bring a buddy, new friend activity event with your pack families. Or if you have a smaller pack, team up with another pack because those more leaders just equal more help with the planning and the supervision and the execution, right? And then create, you could create like a troop versus pack or troop versus troop or pack versus pack challenge. Like maybe you do a field day activity as a scavenger hunt or a minute to win at games. And of course, a lot of our resources, just about all our resources are in the membership and marketing hub. There's a QR code for that right here. The BSA Brand Center is a great spot for uh, images, flyers, um, things for social you know, media. Uh, the list goes on. There's tons of resources there, lots of stock photos as well. The Scouting Wire has some great articles and great um, information for, for leaders in any position. We love, I love Sign Up Genius. Um, if you're looking for folks to sign up and help with certain scouting stations or any of your events, Cognito is also a great way to gather information. Grammarly, if you're not a grammar whiz and emails may um, intimidate you, it's a great free tool. Poster My Wall is also a free flyer, um, well, image creation website as well as Canva. And they, you can create animated images. You can create images for Facebook, Instagram. Um, the list goes on for your emails as well. And of course, um, your own flyers, if, you, if that's uh, what you're looking for as well, something custom. And um, that is the down low of uh, being a new member coordinator. I know that was a lot of information thrown your way and those slides also um, get uploaded with the um, membership workshops on the membership workshop tab. So you'll have the slides there as well that you can download and keep handy too. Um, and refer back to if you like as well for some ideas. So I wanna hear what you guys think. Do you guys have a new member coordinator? And if so, I'd love to hear any questions or how it's working for you guys or how we can make it work better. Are you guys gonna be a quiet group? <laughs> Um, I, I'll ask a question. Sure, Darby. As, as the wall, I'm a wallflower. Like, <laughs> so the, the first thing is I'm like, oh man, I think I'm, but I kind of was, when I first came in, I was new to scouting and I 
was put in charge of rechartering. Is that like a totally different position? Have I been like, like I, I handle the troops recharter, but then I also handle all the membership as new people come in. Is it the same role? So um, with rechartering, um, you know, that's, um, you know, once a year responsibility to make sure that all the adults and the scouts that are continuing are all registered, that the adults have YPT, mm -hmm. um, all of that. And it's kind of um, like a behind the scenes paperwork type of job. Um, when you, when you talk about in charge of the new scouts, are you in charge of making sure they're registered? Yes. Okay. I, but are they, is ideally that done by two different people in general? Like, I don't know if we officially have a new member coordinator. I've just kind of assumed that position because I was handling recharter when I started. I, I hear what you're saying. It, it is slightly different, but it doesn't have to be. Um, you know, that's a good example of how you can really split up that role. If you don't necessarily, you know, enjoy speaking to new people, <laughs> that intimidates you. <laughs> um, and I know it sounds silly, but there's a lot of people like that. My husband always reminds me that I'm the weird one because <laughs> I love a room of people I don't know. It's like my favorite thing. I'm very, it's just, I don't know why it's always been that way, but, um, so if that's not your thing, you probably want to talk to some of your outgoing leaders or maybe, yeah. you know, um, one of your key three, you know, possibly talk to a few people and maybe that person is like the face of the unit mm -hmm. and they're talking to the new families. They're, you know, making them feel welcome. They're at the welcome table. They're up in front of folks. Um, and then you're, you know, you're there. So if they're ready to be registered, you can kind of help them step by step with registering online or if they prefer, you know, a paper uh, application. We are trying to get folks really, for the most part, online registering. It's just a lot easier. Oh, yeah. I love the online registration. Oh, me too. It's like there's no guesswork really with it, right? <laughs> um, so does that answer your question with that? It does. Yeah, it does. And I really appreciate it. Um, I think some of the points you hit on by um, knowing the main details to talk to them about because when we've had new families that know nothing about it we had one show up and the kid wanted to go on the outing that was that weekend and it was kind of like oh man where do I start and what you need to know by Saturday when your kid goes camping oh but my gosh I know that that's overwhelming right yeah. <laughs> yeah I think that's always the hard part too I, I'm glad that you brought that up about you know, okay, they want to, they want to join and then they want to join the next event. I think that's a, it's a great idea, you know, if your unit already has a website or if they don't have a website, definitely um, consider creating one mm -hmm. um, or even a Facebook page if that's easier. But, you know, uh, with those of us that may have the SOAR websites and a lot of us have SOAR websites, um, it's really a great idea to have your calendar posted on there to have um, like a, a generic camping list. So that way, if that person, <clears throat> you know, is like, okay, well, I want to go camping this weekend. What do I need? Oh, we have a camping list right under our activities yeah. tab, you know, um, that might be helpful. Having your permission slips, your activity, you know, permission slips online as well. Um, you know, really making everything accessible. Today's parents, as you guys know, where most of us are today's parents, want everything really accessible and online and everything, at, you know, in a click or two, right? Yeah. So definitely um, try to keep everything kind of in one spot where those families, you could say, you know what, you can go to our website. Um, you can see some of our units pictures there. You can, here's our calendar. Um, you know, here's a packing list. Here's the uniform list that you need. And that would all be hopefully on the website for easy access for those folks as well. Sounds good. Thank you. Is that helpful? Yep. Yep. Thank you. Oh, great. Who else? Darby was brave enough. She's not, she said she's a wallflower. So <laughs> I would love to hear um, if you guys are thinking about this position or if you're in this position and what we can do to help. Yeah, we've never really had a new member person um it's always been spread out between 
and we have a G unit and a B unit. So we have two scout masters and a strong committee. So it's always been kind of broken out. Mm -hmm. um, like I kind of handle the, the social media aspect. You know, we, we do a video every year of, you know, just a slideshow video of the things that the, the troop does. That's a great idea. Summer camp, you know, set by music and skills and recognizing leadership and, you know, those sorts of things. So that you get to see what we're doing and, um, uh, and you know, leave you know our web address and email contacts and contacts for our local Cub Scout unit as well for those that are younger. And uh, so you know, we, we we do that once a year. Um, our state being 603, you know, our troop numbers are 603. So we join the governor and the state in doing something goofy on 603 day. Oh, I love that. I've seen that before. That's awesome. Yeah. So we join and, you know, make, make a big deal out of that. Uh, we do a scarecrow contest in um, October. Oh, fun. So we just kind of, you know, get some silly little prize or whatever. And, uh, you know, the theory behind it is, you know, the, the families that are going to commit to doing a scarecrow contest for the Boy Scouts are people that, or likely recruit into some form of scouting and probably Cub Scouts, but uh, uh, but you know, we do you know just a little you know fun little scarecrow contest thing, and we go to all the other town things, old home days, and police night out and that sort of stuff. So we're and you know as we do get new volunteers, I think our our, our committee member or our committee chairperson, you know, they do a bit of an orientation for the family so they get to understand you know being a troop that things are chaotic and they look disorganized and <laughs> yeah um and no, things don't ever go the way you'd like it to go <laughs> but, <laughs> and uh, a famous you know, last words right that's, that's that's part of the program and it's part of the process and it's just to stand back and watch and help them learn where their mistakes were um you know, so so that's that's you know, so we do have all those things you touched upon, just different people have been doing it. So it's kind of been I guess it's it's part of having a strong committee, I guess. So, you know, I guess Definitely. That, that spot, but. Yeah, I think that's I'm glad you mentioned that, David, because I think it's important to point out that it doesn't always have to be one person. I mean it 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 is a a role. It's not a um, mandatory role when it comes to rechartering or, or being able to form a unit. Um, I would like to say, you know, definitely consider it as a mandatory role because it's so important when it comes to membership. But like you said, as long as folks are, you know, teaming up and doing those things, that's great that it's spread throughout a few people. Because I think, um, you know, a lot of folks, especially our volunteers, our volunteers also volunteer for a lot of other organizations, PTOs, PTAs, their kids' sports, et cetera. We're all definitely overwhelmed with the responsibilities we all have. So definitely knowing that it can be a team effort or that the responsibilities are spread out to other people that have you know, specific strengths that, that work well um, for what's needed, that's, it's, it's just as good as long as it's, um, you know, as long as we're all thinking about membership, you know, and, and membership definitely has to be at the forefront of our minds, right? Because that's what keeps everything going. You know, you have a lot of kids, the kids have more fun, you have more parents, the parents have more fun and less stress. It's more folks that go to camp and can enjoy our camp properties as well. And um, it's just that, that circle that keeps everything running. Um, you mentioned the slideshow. I love that. Our troop just recently did that as well. I'm part of Troop 19 in Nashua. And um, we had one of our leaders who's very tech savvy create a PowerPoint. And um, because we had invited AOL families to come to our last troop meeting recently because those folks will be crossing over soon. And we had a few AOLs from other PACs, not our, not our partnering PAC. So we wanted to really let them know what our troop was about. And we had a slideshow 
and we had different leaders present on different things of what the troop does and what we do for fundraising and camp and high adventure and not so high adventure trips and all of that. And all the families that came that night told us they were going to join our troop. And I think it's because, and it was about four families. And I think it's because they got all the information, right? David, do you feel that way? It's like, once you, once you share all the details, people have what they need to make the decision that's right for their family. Well, yeah, you get a lot of information out of one slideshow that, A, you get to see what they're doing. You get to see, you know, basically just by how the, the, the slideshow presents, you get to find out you know, how much energy is behind it. It was an exciting, you know, troop. You know, you can you can get that feel just from watching a short video. Definitely. The energy that's behind it, and uh, you know, so it, it, you got to take that into consideration when you're making your slideshow. It can't be just some pictures slapped together. But right, exactly. There's got to be a little bit of production behind it. So. Um, and we were lucky too. I don't know about your group, but our group is pretty. You know, our scouts are pretty animated. So as certain things came up, they were laughing. They were kind of reminiscing, and it was really clear to the new families that everybody has a lot of fun. And you yeah. know, it wasn't this like you know stiff slideshow that was serious. It was a lot of fun. People were laughing, reminiscing. It was, you know, and I think that makes them feel like they're part of the crowd already. Yeah. Well, thank you, David. That's awesome. And if you guys have more questions, obviously, if anyone has any questions or suggestions, I'm just going to put this out there before I forget. Um, you can email membership at nhscouting.org. Elwin, did you want to join in? Well, let me let me just say that I've sat through the, uh, uh, the new member coordinator training before, and, and I think one of the things that they, they did before was that they emphasized the fact that you were really supposed to be the welcome person. And, yes. and, and absolutely, there's, there's people who are welcoming people. There, there are the Cindy's of the world. And, <laughs> uh, and then there are the wallflowers, yes. But uh, there, you, you, it, it, it very definitely becomes a team. Uh, mm -hmm. So you need the people going out there to be the, uh, um, uh, to be the greeters and to say hello to people. But uh, you, you can have other people, you have another part of the team who actually has the lists and has the rosters and has the, the checkoff lifts. And, and, and so you share all those things. They don't have to be the same person. So it very definitely is a team effort. Definitely. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. The, the new member coordinator training is, is pretty good. Um, you know, it, it really explains the benefits and what it's all about and what's kind of and the type of person that can take on that role as well. Thank you, Ellen. Thank Sarah, you for doing you have, this. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you for doing the training. Oh my gosh. My pleasure. We're going to be doing um, sort of a training series where we'll we'll touch on different membership topics. That will be more of a training, you know, interactive training, um, you know, and where to find those the tools that relate to the topics as well. So um, if you have suggestions, definitely give us a shout out. Uh, send an email. Um, you can always email support at nhscouting.org. And um, definitely let us know, you know, if you guys are trying the tools that are on the membership and marketing hub, definitely let us know um, how it's working for you. If you if you love them, we want to hear it. If we're missing something or if you don't love them, we definitely want to hear it. Uh, we're always adding new things and I'm always trying to think of something that makes our um, volunteers lives easier. So definitely um, let us know. I'm a, I'm a volunteer as well. and started off volunteering as a brand new family. So I, it's still, uh, I still volunteer. I'm a troop committee chair right now as well. So um, definitely know the ins and outs of, um, you know, how, how much passion we all put into that and how important it is for our kids. 
Well, if no one has any other questions or comments, I don't want to just keep you on here for the fun, even though I love hanging out with you guys. <laughs> um, again, please check out Daniel Webster Council's Membership and Marketing Hub. That is your one-stop spot for recruiting and retention resources, tools, trainings, the whole nine yards. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that in the chat there. Um, thank you guys so much for coming. Please come again. March 23rd is the next um, workshop. And um, same time, 7 p.m. I, I am going to try out different days, I think. Um, so tentatively right March 23rd, because I might actually switch that date for next month um, and see how it goes, just because I know um, a lot of folks have unit meetings on all sorts of different nights, but um, definitely want to make sure we um, get it out there for folks to join us live when they would like to. Um, so definitely give us an email, um, you know, interact with our Facebook page. If you haven't been on there yet, uh, Daniel Webster Council, it's a public page. And um, I'll be seeing you guys really soon and talking to you soon too, I hope. All right, thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all so much. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Night. Bye.